Welcome. We're going to talk about boundary conditions for heat transfer. And this would be um, the case when we have two materials that are adjacent to each other. These materials could be two solids in contact, or they could be a solid in contact with a fluid. So we have material one on the left and material two on the right. And there's a boundary between those two fluids. Now, the key concepts are that the temperatures are equal at that boundary and the fluxes are equal at that boundary. And that's important to understand, in particular, if the temperatures were not equal, let's say the temperature of material one was higher than the te temperature of material two, and that boundary was very thin, then there'd be essentially an infinitely large temperature gradient across, across the boundary, and therefore a very, very large heat flux. Similarly, if the heat fluxes weren't equal, let's say there was more heat coming from the left in material one to the boundary than leaving the boundary going to the right into material two, there'd be an accumulation of heat at the boundary, and if the boundary was very thin, that would mean a very, very high change in temperature. And both of those are physically unrealistic. And so in all practical purposes, we have equal temperatures and equal heat fluxes for the two materials at the boundary. And these concepts give rise to um, three types of boundary conditions. The first one is simply that the temperature is specified at the boundary. Let's call it TS for the surface. An example of this might, might be a shallow tube heat exchanger. If you had steam condensing onto the tubes, then the steam would be at the saturation temperature of the steam, and that would then be the fixed temperature of the tube wall. Another case might be if you had specified heat flux, and let's say we had a solid, and then we had a specified heat flux into that solid, then by Fourier's law, we would have the following if the specified heat flux was QS double prime. And this example, um, this case might be, for example, let's suppose that we had a chemical reactor on the left, and that gave rise to a specified heat flux through the wall of the reactor would be a good example. And then there's also a special case uh, called a well-insulated surface, or maybe uh, we would call it an adiabatic surface where the heat flux is essentially zero through the wall. And that would mean that the temperature derivative would also be zero and we would have a flat temperature profile at the wall. And then finally, the third kind of boundary condition is called the mixed boundary condition that involves both temperature derivatives and temperature. So for example, if we had a solid adjacent to a liquid, so we have Fourier's law on the left for the heat flux through the solid, and then that would equal a heat transfer coefficient times the temperature of the wall minus the ambient temperature T infinity through the fluid, which would be Newton's law. And uh, that would be a mixed boundary condition. Now let's look at an example of this, uh, of applying boundary conditions. And we're gonna consider a case where we have a solid that's adjacent to a fluid. The left-hand side of the solid has a fixed temperature boundary condition. The right-hand side is gonna have a mixed boundary condition. So we're gonna have thermal conductivity or thermal conduction through the solid. And then we're gonna have a convection with a heat transfer coefficient through the fluid. There is gonna be a temperature at the wall but it's not gonna be something that's specified on the right-hand side of the wall. It's something that we have to find as part of the solution. On the other hand, the, the temperature would be specified in the ambient fluid far from the wall. So our goals are one, to find the temperature on the right-hand side of the wall at X equal L. And the second is to find the heat flux U double prime. And the heat flux will be in the X direction if this is a 1D problem with heat flow from left to right. So, at steady state, if there's no generation, then the heat flux through the solid um, is going to be the same as the heat flux through the liquid. And in particular, the solid is going to be given by Fourier's law, which is going to be that um, the heat flux, which is minus K dt dx by Fourier's law. If K is a constant, then we're going to have a linear temperature profile, and we simply get with the derivative T naught minus TL over L, okay? That's the con conductive flux through the wall. And then through the fluid, it's given by Newton's formula, which is the heat transfer coefficient times the temperature difference, which is now TL minus T infinity. And since they must be equal at steady state without generation, then we just set this equation here and set those two fluxes equal to each other. And then the only unknown is TL. So we can now solve for our unknown TL with a little bit of algebra and rearranging. We get the temperature on the right-hand side of the wall 
And so we've met one of our goals. And then to meet the other goal, we can then just plug this result back into the equation for the heat flux, either into the conductive heat flux or the convective heat flux. And that gives us our second goal, which is to find the heat flux. And before we finish, I wanted to highlight that this expression is in the form of a temperature change across the, both layers divided by a sum of two terms, one involving the fluid layer and one involving the solid layer. And that gives rise to what we will call thermal circuits. And so we'll have another screencast on thermal circuits that uh, discuss how heat flow is equal to a temperature driving force divided by a sum of resistances.